A lot has happened this past week with what I consider to be one of the worst groups of people for society. Top tier Twitch streamers. I know that in today's meta of language, everything needs to be taken to the extreme and must be labeled as the best or the worst in every context. But I mean this sincerely. The upper echelon of Twitch streamers are some of the worst people in society. Five dollars a month. How do you have hours of time to watch me? And not five dollars. All right, everyone in the chat's making me depressed with all their fuck sad fucking sob stories about how their life is over and they can't afford five dollars a month. Before I deep dive into why I say this, let's go over what has happened this past week. It all began with Twitch streamer Slicker, a man with over 430,000 followers on Twitch. Net worth not officially known, but going off other streamer metrics and sponsorships, he easily makes six figures per year. He was recently caught having scammed other streamers and viewers of up to $400,000. Using schemes not too far past Nigerian scammer levels of dude, trust me bro. And what did I learn from these 55 people? Well, there were a lot of different ways Slicker liked to approach people, but he really liked this bank scam method. My bank account got locked, temporarily locked, don't have access to my money sadly, because the UK banks, but whatever. I was wondering if I asked if I could borrow money and I'd pay you back. Now, I'd even give you extra. For what purpose did he scam people for closing in on half a million dollars when he's already making at least six figures? To feed his gambling addiction off site. This was going on for a few years. He jumped from one streamer to another until eventually he got caught after trying to use the same scam he'd privately use with individuals with a mass audience. He would hit everyone he can, including underage viewers and even a sickly chemo patient. But man, like, you were my friend, bro. And before I was going for my transplant, knowing you're not going to pay me, you're asking for my money that I pulled together to save my life. And you had no intention, even though I've already given you money. You never paid back that, and then you asked for another 10k before I'm meant to be going to America to pay for this stuff, man. I just want to know. I know addiction is difficult, but we were actually my friend. Slicker's problem isn't so much that he was gambling, it's that he was caught. There's almost no doubt he'd still be scamming people if he didn't get caught. He gave some fake tears, <laughs> let it sometimes slip how little remorse he actually had. Slicker, you understand that people don't think that you look or sound remorseful at all, right? Hell, like, I, I don't just, give I'm a fuck. I know, like, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to... I'm not, wait, what does that mean? Wait, as in, wait, what do you mean? And will go to so many lengths to try and avoid real responsibility and accountability for his actions. They can actually fuck your life. They can fuck your family's life, man. Have you even told them the seriousness of what's going on? My dad has uh, kind of similar to what you have, Lapelli, you know, MS. Yeah. He also has like uh, diabetes, so. Yes. So, you know, this is. So really if I, if I told him, if I told him he would, he would pass away. The reaction of the Twitch community, at least in my view, has been a various mix of bad takes. One of the only top streamers to outright call this out is Osmongold, who has over 3 million followers and is owner of an organization called OTK, of which many of these top Twitch streamers are a part of. Responding to this tweet from Osmongold is streamer Trainwreck, with over 2 million followers, calling Osmongold out. In this context, your pals means anyone in OTK and other close associates. He's pointing out they're still giving Slicker, the one who scammed them and many other people out of around $400,000, a platform to speak and try to garner sympathy. Miss Kiff was the person to the left of the clips used earlier, and also an owner of OTK, at least for now. To the right is Hassanbi, who we will get to later. Both of them have over 2 million followers each. In comes Miss Kiff with the reply calling out Trainwreck for himself scamming people. I'm not all on the up and up of meaningless streamer drama, so I don't know the story of these two, but the reply to Miss Kiff is where things get spicy. Maya and Mitch are other streamers at the level we've been talking about so far in terms of followers. 
As of typing out this script, it's still a developing situation, but the allegation, as it stands, is that Miskiff used these two to blackmail some woman who was sexually assaulted and order to keep them quiet and make sure Miskiff's buddy was all clear. Bro, you've been here for a year. A year. Do you not realize by now that I'm very supportive of women? Is this not a thing that's known by now? Okay? Is this not a thing that's known? <laughs> I'm, I'm very feminist. I guess in this case, feminism made way to bros before it hoes. That's a pretty heavy allegation, though at this point it doesn't really seem to be an allegation, and one that was not met with denial, but with an attempt to delete tweets and cover it up. What do you think, Miskiff? Of what you can deem of it, it's sexual harassment, whatever. At a low scale, it's not really a big deal. I don't think people really gave a shit and really cared. Now that all that is laid out, here comes the clickbait twist. This video is not about this particular situation, at least not in the way people think. That's because this incident is not an isolated incident. This type of scumbag behavior is the norm for the upper echelon of Twitch. But before we dive into these problems with Twitch and this group of streamers, I want to talk about the youth. After all, it is the young ones who tend to watch Twitch. In 2019, over 40% were ages 16 to 24, of which probably a significant amount of that being kids even younger who lie about their age. For some reason, to which I can make some guesses as to why, I can't find a specific statistic after this, as they lump 16 to 34 into just one category now. You know what's a popular thing for my fellow youth to hate on? Those greedy corporations. The ones who view customers as mindless pay piggies, who look to do nothing more than make a quick buck, who don't care what they destroy as long as they personally profit. Every donation made to a charity is nothing more than a PR stunt that is a tax write-off. Man, we really hate all those old people in suits who seem to care for nothing more than money. I'm sure this tangent won't be relevant to Twitch streamers, so let's get back to them. These top Twitch streamers stream to tens of millions, upwards of a hundred million viewers every single month. Largely on young, impressionable minds. I view them largely as an evolution of the 90s and 2000s reality shows. It's like taking the worst of the real world, mixing it with jackass, and sprinkling in some Jersey Shore to top it all off. It's people who put on an act when the camera is on and try to pass it off as the real persona. No, because I hate Schlatt. Oh, honestly, I can't stand him either. Fake as hell. No, he is. Yeah. He thinks he's, like, it pisses me off whenever people think they're so real and so mm -hmm. raw, but it's like you're not, you're plastic. <laughs> yeah. Like, and, uh, you know, Schlatt and I may be in the same org, we just act like we're each other's friends because it's it's like we I have to be fake as well to get on that level. I mean, you, honestly, you know what I mean. There's a lot of backstabbing that goes on in that org, isn't there? Like a lot of. It's just part of the scenes. territory, honestly. It seems like that. They throw big parties for themselves, filming themselves getting wasted on stream and behaving like idiots. If it was just that, combined with some video game streams, it wouldn't be as much of a problem. Coming down to some differing opinions on lifestyle choices. However, it doesn't stop there. The outrage over Slicker's scamming is laughable to me, as is Trainwreck's and Miskiff's reactions. That's because they too take part in the same sort of scams, undoubtedly costing their victims millions of dollars, just with different tactics. They like to participate in gambling streams. Hours upon hours upon hours of gambling streams, sometimes up to 15 hours per day. Gambling streams that the young, impressionable minds who don't know any better are watching. Gambling streams that are frequently sponsored by the websites that they use. Websites that are, to put it mildly, shady. They are frequently not based in the US, able to get around any and all regulation, transparency, and accountability. They require a VPN to get to, and like to use cryptocurrency to gamble, removing much of the traceability. The reason Trainwreck was so upset before wasn't because he's a good guy, it's because people like Miskip were starting to go after gambling streams even though they take part in it, and Trainwreck did not like that. And somehow, I'm sure by pure coincidence, a very large number of streams managed to hit the statistically improbable odds of winning very big. And who seem to hit those statistically improbable odds of a single giant win at a statistically improbable frequency. It's already known companies do things like fix the odds for streamers. Counter-Strike GO has had a problem with loot boxes and skins, as people gamble away lots of money trying to win these things. 
One streamer, Mo Asar, gambled using fake house money and never disclosed it to his streamers. The skin gambling site that he was using even told him in advance when he was going to win big, letting him script his totally natural reaction. If you think that these gambling sites that pay these streamers as much as $35,000 an hour don't manipulate the numbers for the totally genuine reactions of these streamers winning big, and by extension manipulating the naive audiences who also wish to be like them, well then I've got some sponsorships to sell you. Slicker lied to people to get their money so he can gamble. The differences between him and all the other streamers condemning him, while simultaneously lying to all of their own streamers with these gambling sites, leading them down a dark path with horrific habits that have destroyed people's lives as bad as any drug addiction. That since the dawn of civilizations has been recognized as an evil that must be controlled and contained, the difference between Slicker and those condemning him is minimal at best. The reason these places pay as much as $35,000 an hour is that they expect not only to make that money back, but much, much more. So a streamer doing a 10 hour stream just for that single day is going to condemn foolish children, making them think they too can win big at a rate much worse than what Slicker did. These streamers, like XQC, with over 11 million followers, who do these gambling streams, become addicted to gambling themselves. They start gambling away the millions, the literal millions of dollars they rake in per year, and publicly tell the stories about it. They then go on and do it again, taking more online casino sponsorships. Why? For the money. Because the viewers, those pay piggies, who are nothing more than a means to an immortal end, don't matter to any of them. They will destroy as many people as it takes, with a smile on their face, so long as they can keep making more and more money. Go back to what I was saying about corporations, about those greedy old men in suits, who will destroy everything around them all for the almighty dollar. They're doing the very same thing. They're supporting people who I would argue are even worse. They're either willingly or manipulated into giving their money away to people who can directly see and even feel the damage that they are doing to the people who are supporting them and continue to do so. Not because they would go broke if they didn't do these gambling streams. They still have plenty of other sponsors they can work with who are not promoting one of the most common and destructive sins of mankind. But they don't just want money. They want more. More and more money. And regardless of what state they leave their viewers in, it doesn't matter because they got what's theirs. This isn't the only type of depravity you see from these top streamers. What was originally a place for video games has quickly spiraled into a place for whores. Women, who are incapable of doing anything else with their existence it seems, go on stream doing some of the most depraved things they can get away with. Again, tricking young, impressionable kids, making them feel like they're a part of something, either by saying their hollow thank yous in a fake cutesy voice, or writing their names on their bodies for money, or so many other things. I even did a stream where I tried to see if these women even did anything during their time. And spoiler alert, they didn't. The rabbit hole of the Twitch horde is a video essay by itself, so I'll just leave it to the basics here. With all that has been said so far, what is most baffling to me about all of this? What, to this day, boggles my mind and I have no understanding of? The one aspect that damn near drives me to insanity. All of these people are boring as fuck! There's nothing to any of these people! There's no personality! No entertainment value! None! I'm not even going to give an ounce of credibility to the concept of people have different tastes. Because people can have different tastes on if they prefer Coke, or Pepsi, or Sprite, or Dr. Pepper. But once someone comes in, asking everyone to piss in each other's mouths to see who has the most zest to them, then the conversation stops. A year or two ago, I sat down and watched many of these streamers for many hours each to try and learn what makes them so famous, so popular, and the only conclusion that I was able to get 
was that Twitch decided on some people to become the poster boys, promoted them, and everyone else flocked in the same way that people gathered when they see a large crowd gathered somewhere else. I should be a little fair and try to slightly narrow these broad brushstrokes. This doesn't apply to every single top streamer. Ludwig, at the very least, didn't make me want to blow my head off, but it was not anything I'd want to watch again, so that may come down to just personal tastes. People like Tyler1, who definitely does not fit my idea of entertainment, I can at least see why others would find him entertaining. That makes sense to me. Only Osmond Gold ever did anything to pique my interest in some way, who seemed to have some insights, and who does not seem like his IQ dips below 90. But then you have people like Hassan, who we mentioned earlier. This dumb motherfucker. In between such brilliant takes like we deserve 9-11, with his ramblings on socialism while buying himself a 1.3 million dollar home, frequently has streams where he does literally nothing. I know the other aspect of today's meta of language is that you use literally to mean anything, but in this case, I mean literally in the literal sense. He does quite literally nothing. He plays someone else's clip of video, occasionally throwing in a damn bro or other enlightened insight. This of course is a massive deal. This is no longer just petty internet drama, sexual assault. This white monster just jizzed on my face. Fuck. <clears throat> is a crime and it is something that should never be taken lightly. And that's it. Sometimes, he outright just walks away from his desk, letting his viewers continue to watch. Well, not him. I guess he really is a socialist, making money off other people's work. These people are so depraved of talent and skill that they even in the past resorted to just turning on full broadcasts of television shows, watching basic bitch television with tens if not hundreds of thousands of viewers. And that's all they would do. It had to be put a stop to by Twitch, in which these streamers all bitched and complained. This has gone on pretty long, so let's try and wrap this up, bringing it back to what I said at the very beginning, that these are some of the worst people in society. These people amass millions of dollars without producing anything. I would strongly argue not even producing entertainment. In a way, the chat rooms have become a culture in and of themselves, regardless of viewer, but that's its own rabbit hole. They produce nothing for society, while at the same time siphoning millions upon millions of dollars. To get even more money, they are willing to plunge their audience into the world of gambling. They're willing to lie about using their own money. They're willing to get much more favorable odds given to them. And they're willing to throw young, naive people down a pit that they may never escape from. Their own moral character is so depraved that even when they themselves fall into that very same hole, knowing how difficult it is to climb back out, despite the tens of thousands of dollars per month rolling in, they will continue to throw people down that same hole so they can turn those tens of thousands of dollars into hundreds of thousands. Aside from that, outside of their bullshit facades of being decent people on stream, there's still a giant group of rapists and harassers among many other things they would denounce publicly, but practice privately. Stop giving them your money. Find streamers who, if you took the chat away, you would still find entertaining. Find streamers who would not so easily give up any integrity for a larger payout. Find streamers who would not throw you to the wolves to feed their own lusts. Out of all the usual outro cliches, I would say sharing this video is the most important out of the like, share, subscribe combo. You don't need to support me by just throwing money at me. You can support me by treating yourself. Visit my website, dragonstreasure.com, link below, and see some of the loose leaf teas that I sell and blend. I know, the idea of someone on the YouTubes who actually has some level of skill in something physical and tangential is uncommon, but here I am. If you want a video that's more uplifting than this crap, check out my good and login video and become inspired to be something better than some corrupt, rapey Twitch streamer.